This very minute? Yeah. Where, Where does he live? Doing right now? Nashville. Nashville. Also, it's the same time and there. And they're having a tough time in Nashville. 223, Jack White. 223 on a Friday. Yeah. He is picking out which pair of black pants he wants to wear. I mean, Nashville was still dealing with all the tornadoes that blew through. People who lost homes in that situation, now they got to deal with all this nonsense. Mm-hmm. Nashville is the. I thought Nashville was Central Time. They're on Eastern Time. Are no, they? I think they're Central. I thought they were straight down. I from think us. they're Central Time. So it would be one. Where's Nashville? Point to it on the map. It's in the state of Tennessee. Um. Uh, Nashville is no, yeah, Nashville, it's that's Nashville's over here. So they're they're in Central Time. Central Time. There you al- go. Also, it's not a straight line either. Okay, right here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? It, it has. Tri- well, we do have a map, so we can be sure. Where? Oh, you mean the time zone? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I was sure, seeing if but... they were closer, like straight down from Chicago. Then yeah, or I thought they were closer to. They are on Central Time. Uh, yeah. That's easier just so to do there, that. Yeah, get, right, there you go. <laughs> so right now it's 1.24 p.m. in Nashville. Now let me ask you this. Irrespective of what Jack White may or may not be doing, do you think the one-hour time difference that we just collectively labored over <laughs> is going to affect what he's doing? Do you think that, I mean, from one hour to the next, he might be doing the exact same thing? I feel like he stays busy. Okay. He's, he's a collector. He's editing he likes something? weird stuff. He's always doing different musical projects. He's got his record store. He's probably reorganizing his record collection. Do you think right he's now. reorganizing his record collection? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, that'd be a fine thing to do. An afternoon project? Maybe, Maybe so. Yeah. You know, the trouble that they're having with the COVID-19 and all of the, uh, you know, uh, Plains states in the middle of the country, the people who up till maybe 15 minutes ago thought this was all a liberal hoax, is that they're trying to get these people to stop going to church, which is a hard thing to do. And churches are closing, right? Well, they are because they're like, look, we can't have that. We can't have people in here. Prayer doesn't actually work. Stay home. <laughs> you, all that you play the tambourine at home. Talk to snakes on your own time. All right. Um, that's Slytherin. That's not. You're thinking of Harry Potter. Biters. No, I'm thinking of snake uh, handlers. What's it called? Parcel tongue. But what's what called? What's it called when you in Harry Potter when you talk to snakes? I don't know Harry Potter. I know all that evangelical nonsense, and so do you. All the talking to snakes. That's that's your background. If my sister's listening right now. She's flipping out, screaming at the TV. Because she's a Harry Potter oh, nerd. Oh, she's a huge Harry Potter nerd. And the question is what? Slytherin's there's, the house. Slytherin's the house. There's a, there's a, there's a term for when you can speak to snakes. When you speak snake. Snake speaker. Snake. Serpent. Parcel tongue. It's something with a P. I think. Parcel tongue or something is that like what that. It, is? it might be that. Parcel tongue. Hey, nailed it. Is the language of serpents. There it is. I see. So the snake that lives under my bed that comes out every night to talk to me, that's what he's talking? You are a parcel tongue if you can talk to him. No, no, no. I don't know what he's saying, but he's moving his mouth and he's flicking his tongue and I figure he must be trying to say something to me. And I'm like, Maybe. get back into the bed. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. So you're sleeping with a foot hanging off the bed when you got a snake under the bed, too? Yes. Oh, brave man. I mean, they I didn't really realize nice. that until last night. Mm. But now that I do, I'm like, oh, he thinks my foot is another snake. He comes out and he says, Alan, sanitize your hams. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hams. <laughs> your hams. I noticed all your hams were not sanitized. Yeah. Okay, parcel tongue. There you go. Uh, as well as other, uh, it's a language of serpents, and you can also talk to the rune spore and the basilisk. Gee, sure. it's amazing to me. Now, again, with all due respect, uh, the Harry Potter adult nerds will never cease to amaze me. Now, if you read She's, them as a child, I was going to say she grew up with it. If you read, that's fine, right? Except I don't know that that's true because my son is nineteen. He grew up with them. Your sister is considerably older than 19. 20, she'll be 27 next week. Oh, okay. Not that much. Yeah. All right. But that also means that she started reading Harry Potter in junior high, maybe? Probably. Yeah. I'm talking about the adults who start reading Harry Potter. And then I've <laughs> gone over this before. We've done and this, this is well tread ground. But you got my hackles up. All right? I'll pull them down. <laughs> I'll pull down your hackles. Ooh, that's right, kinky. I will, I will talk about speaking of snakes. Uh, <laughs> that's a parcel tongue for you. There you go. Oh, Cody. I, will, uh, I will retract my hackles okay. on that. 
but I just know. used to take out the Harry Potter. I never would read them. I would just rent them out in the library so the nerds couldn't get them. You jerk! <laughs> because you know they Turn had on the chief petty officer. <laughs> he is goes back a long way. They're like, we have four books left, and I'm like, ooh, 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 you know, I want the Chamber of Secrets, and they're like, all right, you got the last one. Everyone's like, oh, they're like, and so hear, you'd take them home and let them sit. One, just sit until he has to return it. Yeah, till we go back to the library. But there was always some dumb bitch. Well, she was actually a smart <laughs> one. She's like, he can't even read. Why is he even getting those books? <laughs> he can't like, even read. I would hear in the background. I was like, just for that. I'm going to re-rent it out. Wow. He's like, Cody, wouldn't you rather have C-Spot run? Re-rent it out. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it's called? Not, not renew it. Check it out. Re-rent yeah. it. Re-rent He's it re-renting his library I, I swear, like, I would have a book sitting in my backpack for, like, the whole semester. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I got to return this. And I'm like, do, 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 do. What is it called? You, when you, you, check, it. you check a book no, check a book out. Check, oh. you check it out. Yeah. yeah. Chen- Check, 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 get out. Like Gen- that whole Gentleman. Beastie Boys song was about libraries. Was like bookstore day not the best day ever in school? Oh, I loved it. Oh, it was yeah. the best day ever. Just I loved the smell of fresh yes. books. Yes. It was cool. I never bought a book, though. I, I bought pins like, and stuff. Yeah, I would buy pins. <laughs> yep. I had so many bookmarks. Never read a book, but I always liked the like, because they were like shimmery mm-hmm, or whatever. They were collectors. Yeah. I just remember the time, I think I was probably in the eighth grade, I remember when we found out that there was a book in the school library that had a sex scene in it. <gasps> it was a Judy Bloom book. I think it's, it was called Forever by Judy Bloom. You guys remember Judy Bloom? She yeah. was like, are you there, God, it's me, Margaret. I think yeah. that was Judy Bloom. It was about Bloom. getting your period and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was <laughs> like, uh, yeah. It really was. It was like that. coming okay. of age tales for girls. There was Deanie and there were, there were all these Judy Bloom books. But there was one called Forever, and I think it was about a teenage girl who was, she and her boyfriend were having sex for the first time. And so there was like a, and this was a small book, but there was a two or three page passage in this book that started out as dog-eared, as like code among the students. Mm -hmm. Hey, check out Forever, find the dog ear. And it's a sex scene, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing, it wasn't Fifty Shades of Grey, but we're in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. We're looking for whatever in the printed word because we're not getting, mm-hmm. at least I wasn't getting anything. I wouldn't get anything in the eighth grade. I didn't kiss anybody till the seventh grade. I should look up the dirty words in the dictionary. I used to get off to that. Really? I was oh, just, man. Art books I was just is like, where penis. we were at. Art books? Yeah. Oh, with all have, the boobs. They have photography. You had those in junior high, though? Uh, I don't know if we had them at the school. Yeah. But I mean, anytime we went to like a bookstore, We'd go find the art books and look at. I remember man, I, doing some stuff with boobs and bush. The first time oh, I ever seen so like much bush. a naked man. It wasn't a naked man, but it was just like a naked drawing was in the puberty book. Like when they give us and they talk to us in fifth grade and they have like a drawing of like you know like what your body does when you have like an erection or something like that. I kept that book and I looked at. it. I was like, oh my god, it's an erection. I think the first set of boobs I saw that weren't like you know, I don't know. Mine or my family <laughs> that weren't <laughs> mine, uh, or my family. and I didn't see mine till I was sixteen. So I think it, it was, was a whole thing. I think it was Titanic when I saw like that sex scene was the first time. Tan- Titanic <laughs> or Analyze This, one of those two. I don't know which came first. Probably Titanic. Titanic, yeah. Um, but those are the two sex scenes I remember having an impact on me when I was young. I saw my first set of boobs watching WWF, and it was like a pay per view, and it was some old she lady. The boobs out? Well, no, they they it was live, and they meant to censor it, but if it, it was, I guess the delay wasn't long enough. So like she moved to the side, and they were like saggy boobs. So you saw like a nipple pop out, and then they you see the censor try to go over and, and <laughs> get it, and we were like, oh my god! It was, <laughs> Is her that name- the fabulous moolah? <laughs> No, it, it was Deborah, <laughs> and then there was a bunch of there was an old lady that was like a wrestler too. Mm. Yeah. Old lady boobs for the first time. Chris. Trying to think of the... Those art boobs. Uh, the art boobs. Those uh, art books were the first things I whacked off to as a kid. Yeah. We because had to. I was an ar- I, I wanted to be an artist. So my parents, all they got me all the time were like, how to draw cartoon characters, how to draw superheroes, you know, where they'd give you like the sketches and all that stuff. Well, the art books, how to draw the human form, right? Mm. The left side was the nude because you had to get the shading and the whatever. I was mm-hmm. deadly serious about it. And then when I got less serious about it and more serious about the whacking off part, right. I go, hey, I've got some source material out there in the hallway bookcase. I know where boobs are. I'm going to go grab one of those. Like, I bet my, I bet if I went to that bookcase in the hallway, uh, that that would still, I bet those would still be there. I want to those say books. One of the first boobs I remember seeing on TV or like in a movie was uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. The shower scene. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, Beverly D'Angelo. Beverly, yeah, Beverly D'Angelo. She right was at the beginning. super foxy back mm-hmm. then. Yeah, Mrs. Griswold. 
Very good. Good boobs there. Fight Club, what was that, 2003, maybe? Yeah. 1999. 99? Yeah. That was one where I was getting some feels. I saw Brad Pitt, and I was like, I don't know what that is, but I like it, and I want to look at it even more. even guys were questioning his sexuality after they saw a body but I, like that. It was that. about 10, and I was like, I like that. I didn't know men's stomach know looked like is. that. <laughs> I was the like, arrow? What? I was like, what's wrong with diving? that? I was like, why is he all scarred up? <laughs> like, who stabbed him? And Merle was like, oh, no, that's ripped. I'm like... Who stabbed him? Who stabbed him? <laughs> Who stabbed him? I thought they were like scars from like a knife or something. Oh, you no. thought he was like Seal. Yeah, but eight <laughs> of them in a row, but all by in his stomach. His, I see. I was like, wow. What was a like, specific art. stabbing. Then I understood sculpting. Like, your body is sculpted. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, we were talking about how uh, Gal Gadot, the Israeli actress who plays Wonder Woman, tried to, um, she had the best of intentions by getting a bunch of celebrities uh, on on the Twitter to sing the John Lennon song Imagine, and it was not received in the spirit in which it was given. It was dragged mercilessly. Thank God that Gilbert Gottfried is out there because he is uh, he's on Cameo. Mm-hmm. I don't think I have to tell you that he makes a lot more money on Cameo than I do, um, but he is there to help us through. Uh, he was there to help us after nine eleven by immediately making jokes about it <laughs> and he's here to help us through the uh, coronavirus <laughs> I like how he's clearly <laughs> yeah. reading the lyrics yeah here's the thing with this him. guy can't afford teeth that fit his mouth nah he's Wh- kind of cheap He's kind of famously cheap. Yeah? Yeah. It's got Even a nice though... apartment, though, boy. Mm-hmm. That's got to be from getting married and having kids. His apartment, they did a thing on it in Architectural Digest or something mm-hmm. a couple years ago. I, was, I thought it would be a, a, a hovel. But then I'm like, oh, he's married. He's got yeah, a couple he's kids. Yeah, he's got a family. She refined him a little bit. It's beautiful. Side note. Uh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Um, you know, he's the only guest that Wendy Williams would not have back on her show. Was he mean to her? Um, when he came in, I guess the first time she interviewed him, the first time on the show, he gave her a hug and he l- rested his head because he's really short and she's really tall. He rested his head on her boobs. And it offended her? Yeah, she was That's pissed. That's all it took? Oh my God. Yeah, she was pissed. Whenever I hear him hmm. speak, and I saw him do stand-up in New York when I was there last summer, I can only picture Yago. That's all I see from Aladdin. Oh, the bird. That's <laughs> it. So every time I hear, like when I hear this, I'm picturing a little red bird Parrot. singing this to me. <laughs> anyway, so he's, I don't know if somebody commissioned that uh, from him on Cameo or if he just kind of put it out there. Again, my one and only interaction ever with Gilbert Gottfried was probably 20 years ago. I was doing my show from New York for the VMAs, and we were in a huge media tent. And so you had people coming in and out. You had bands and celebrities and things. You were given a list of people that were going to be coming through for the VMAs, presenters and whatnot, a whole cavalcade. And we got a list. Of who do you want and who don't you? And so you'd go, yes, yes, no, no, yes, whatever was appropriate to the kind of show you were doing. And there was this little man who kept circling in and out of the tent. And he would go, he'd just walk past the craft services table. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'd be so and he weird. had like a plastic Dwayne Reed bag. And yeah. I would see him putting things into this plastic bag. And he would, I never saw him from the front, only saw him from the back. And so he would come through. And then he'd come back in again. And I didn't see him come back in. I was doing other things. But when I'd look over, this guy was at the craft. And somebody must have said something like, you got a homeless dude over there picking your crafty apart. <laughs> and he turned around, and I was like, it's Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> and He's I'm famously like, cheap, I mean. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, there's lots Taking of stories of him doing things like that. But that's the type of famous person I would be. Like, I'm like, I'm not I that I feel like that's such a, hard, it's such a hard habit to break. You know what I mean? You're like, used to being broke. And yes. You're like, and, and it's instant food. Like, it's still going to be good once you leave. You know how much stuff I steal from Continental Breakfast? And they throw hotels, away. Like. They throw it away. If people don't eat it, which a lot of people are too cool, they're like, mm, I got to watch my figure. That's not on my diet. Yada, yada, yada. It's just not good food. Give me that ham. <laughs> not, not always. Sometimes they just have like chicken fingers or like they got pickles laying out. And you out. Mm-hmm. are the problem in a time like this. What? You're only thinking to yourself. No one's giving free food. You're, you're, huh? No one's N- giving free food. 
And we're not talking about free food. You're not leaving anything for other people. I didn't say I take all of it. Mary said, you know how much free food I take from the Continental Breakfast, which, let's be real, it's awful food anyway. Well, yeah. You have one serving of it, and you don't need to eat for a week. No. Because you can't stand the smell of food. But, but I'll take like the muffins or the bananas or stuff with me to have for... things that other people would probably like if they were down there. Sure. Think of those people who come down. I don't take all of the muffins. See, I'm the guy. I'm a little prickly because I'm the guy who forgets the, about the breakfast downstairs. So I always run down like with three minutes left. Yeah. And they're putting everything away. They're putting everything you... away. Hey, give, this, like, hey, give me this yogurt. Right. <laughs> I get the yogurt. I just need a banana. <laughs> Can I get a spoon? They're like, no, we already put the spoons away. <laughs> right. like, Damn it. <laughs> eat it like a jello shot. Yeah. I need a melted lukewarm yogurt, and uh, I'll take a, a bruised apple, and uh, that everything Danish that you've got over there. See? Never even heard of an everything Danish, but there is one. I am very good at setting an alarm for it. So if it's continental breakfast, say it ends at 10. No, oh. if it ends at 10, I'll set an alarm for like 9. Go down there, eat breakfast, grab a couple to-go things. And then go back up to my room and go to sleep for a few hours. Go back to sleep for a few hmm. hours. All right. And then I have snacks when I wake up. But you're up. not hoarding food at the expense of other people, I'm saying. No, no, no. I'm All not right. taking a ton. But some places don't even do like hot breakfasts. So they'll just have out like granola bars and stuff. I will hoard that. I'll take 15 granola bars because I'm mad at the extended stay. Where you're mad? Like, yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, I'm still paying $100 a night to stay here. And you give me a... Granola bar? Well, I'm taking 15 of them. But is the granola bar... I, <laughs> I do! I feel that. I I granola, yeah. But the granola bar is not factored into the price of the room. But a breakfast would be. No, I don't think it is. It should be. That's well, how I feel. I, I think if you pay extra, you go, hey, could I pay extra? So they got... So I can get multiple granola bars. I'll take every granola bar. You're not going to tell me I you guys, <laughs> no, show this I've shoved them into my trips, pockets. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I have different so. disguises? No. No, you, just go down, just go down and clear it all out in one swoop. Sweatpants and a hoodie, one, one, one fatal swoop. Every single nut and berry. Oh God! Are you the type of person that goes into like the hotel room and just starts taking like the shampoo bottles and the soaps? I have so many. Honey, of those, dude. I, 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 I didn't buy like body wash for like the longest time. Dude, when I'm moving my apartment, I'm like, why do I have? I have three gallon, and this is what makes me nervous because my mom was a hoarder. I have three gallon size bags of soap, shampoo, yep. conditioner, mm-hmm. lotions, but then I'm like. Hey, if things get crazy out in the world, then I can't go buy it. And I think those, <laughs> I think toiletries, hotels factor in people taking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Towels, when people used to take those, they never factored those in. And so I then take they the were coffee. like, we, we get take... charged for those. Well, now you do because they got sick of it. So now they would have that passive aggressive language on your receipt. They'd be like, we've taken the liberty of adding a towel to your bill so you can enjoy our comfort in your own home. <laughs> right, right, Whatever right. they say. <laughs> you took a robe from us, you jag off, so we're going to charge you for it. Yeah. They didn't used to do that back in the day. What audio did you play a little bit ago? Of what? I don't know. Someone said... Gilbert Godfrey? Oh, G- Gilbert Godfrey. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that at three, whatever channel that was? Mm-hmm. Okay. Someone said they couldn't hear it. Oh, mm-hmm. maybe not. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, they're still getting all the settings back up, so... They really they really didn't want to miss Gilbert Godfrey does well, sing. I mean, it's, he's <laughs> I got understand. a beautiful voice, and it's a beautiful song. You it's put very them together. Soothing. It's yeah. really just what people need at this time. Well, if you're watching the live stream, I apologize for you missing yeah. that lullaby. But, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Tell Bill that was the fabulous moolah, and I'm still scarred by that incident. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. Let me break here. 35192. Want to send a text? You can uh, listen. Uh, anywhere on the iHeartRadio app, you can watch uh, at alancockshow.com or YouTube. What are we doing? Uh, YouTube, uh, and you, both, all of it. Both, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. We'll be back after these. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS, and everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio.